where essentially you get two different data sets, you collide them, uh, and then on the rows and columns, you necessarily enumerate or you label the sets of entities or concepts that you're going to find in your data set, and in the cell, it's basically where this is where the rows Uh, and these matrices are interesting because they can be computed efficiently, uh, they can be computed for any time slice, so they can be computed for any kind of context, uh, and they provide a great substrate to be able to use uh, powerful similarity metrics to be able to reason about why these things are similar, why these things are different, uh, and what the internal structure ultimately of these kinds of matrices ultimately are. But don't just take my word for it. Um, what we'll talk about here in many of the minutes that I have remaining is some of the actual deployments uh, that the sacrament has been used on it and has continues to be used on, uh, and some of the, the ways that we're actually making this work. Um, so, you know, cardiologists at Mount Sinai have been using saffron to be able to improve the quality of their diagnoses. Companies like USAA, and I saw some folks from USAA here today, are using saffron to improve the, the recommendations they make to their customers in terms of financial products. Uh, and companies like Intel are saving real money. Let's kind of dig into some of these. Um, so, one of the challenging problems in cardiology today uh, is trying to distinguish between different uh, conditions that might present with the same symptoms. Uh, so there are two conditions that Mount Sinai was interested in distinguishing between. Uh, one known as restrictive cardiomyopathy, which is a usually a fatal condition that requires you to necessarily have to have a heart transplant. And I always have to read off the slide, constrictive pericarditis. It's good. I'm, I'm, I don't even play a doctor on TV. Uh, and so, and with pericarditis, uh, usually we present the same kind of symptoms, but it can be treated usually with anti-inflammatories. Uh, and you know, the best doctors in the world can distinguish between these two conditions based on the data that they see, and it's a tremendous amount of data that they look at, uh, about 75% of the time. Uh, Saffron was able to take a look at a little bit of patient histories from, you know, stored by, the, by Mount Sinai Hospital, uh, and be able to bump that up to about 92%. And it's not just any data, it's this kind of data, right? We're not talking, I mean, I like, I'm a text guy, so I like to fall back to text as my examples, uh, but this is actually ECG data, uh, and you're tracking speckles, actually you know, discolorations in the heart muscle itself, and you're trying to track it second over second and you know, the delta in position over time. Um, and the neat thing is if you have enough of these ECG data, you can actually build the matrices that I was alluding to before, uh, and you basically represent the knowledge of all of the data that you've actually seen. Uh, and then when a patient comes along and has, says, hey, I've got these symptoms, you can hook them up with the ECG machine and take their matrix and compare it against everything you've seen before. Uh, and ultimately, if you see conditions, you know, and basically look at the fingerprints of these matrices, uh, ultimately it reveal. And if it looks something like the one in green, uh, well, you can prescribe any inflammatories. If it looks like the one in red, well, you know, you've got to bring some tougher news to the patient. Uh, the exciting thing about this is it's not just that it works but it actually works better than some of the kind of leading approaches in supervised learning at this point. That's not to say that we couldn't data engineer our, all these curves to look the same, but out of the box, uh, you know, Saffron, the top line in black, actually shows that it's got a fast learning rate and better performance if measured by AUC than, uh, you know, random force comes pretty close, but definitely better than, you know, your, your typical uh, deep learning implementation with deep uh, USAA uh, was able to use, you know, one of the things that these kind of associated with representations are really fabulous at is in terms of personalization. Uh, and so uh, USAA was able to not only increase the customer satisfaction with the recommendations that they were able to make using Saffron, uh, they were actually able to increase dramatically the number of the types of products they were ultimately recommending. Right? So this is a real win for data science and artificial intelligence because we're not necessarily having to spend the time analyzing each of those individual cases and what would make a good recommendation. We're able to use a one-size-fits-all kind of representation you know, that the data lake that we already have, be able to interpret it using a cognitive solution to be able to get the results that we need to be able to make real business. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the projects that we have at Intel. So we have at least 12 different projects across Intel. Intel is a big place, as I am learning. Um, but our, uh, you know, our, our, our friends in the manufacturing world were so excited by what they had seen in, in the first six months of a pilot with Saffron that they wanted me to talk about it. Uh, and so this is bug triage which is a you know, very popular problem, and everybody, there seems to be lots of different solutions. Uh, but you know, the exciting thing about applying a cognitive solution to bug triage uh, is not only that you can deduplicate, right, or you can recognize true similarity between you know, weird reports or defect reports, uh, but you can actually use Saffron to be able to infer the root cause of the problem. 
right? Let's, you know, if you spend any time doing clustering, uh, you, you can always find clusters that make sense and you feel like a data science hero, and then there are clusters on the edge and you're saying, God, what is in that container? Uh, and you don't necessarily make sense. But the nice thing about Saffron is that it's able to be able to provide you with reasoning about why those, why those entities were in Nestle, why those events were in bucketing together. Uh, and that is what the kind of insight that we need to be able to save their money. Uh, and so, you know, I can't talk about the exact dollar figure, but we're expecting more than $100 million uh, in terms of savings just in that one group. And we've got 12 more deployments inside of Intel that we're excited about to see. So, you know, we are excited about AI at Intel, and we are, ex you know, and AI is such an important part of Intel's going forward strategy. We are also very excited about the role that cognitive, this new paradigm, uh, you know, that you know, is really paying dividends, uh, can pay within it. Play within AI. Um, I think, but this doesn't let us off the hook. I think the admonition that I would leave you all with, uh, and regardless if you're a, someone who's making a decision about what your business should invest in, or your developer who's building tools correctly, um, is that you know, choose your tools wisely. You have it's incumbent on you to be able to to make sure that you're selecting the right algorithms and the right hardware and the right devices for the job. And if you, this is not. In direct science, somebody asked a question yesterday and said, well, how do we do that? How do we, you know, programmatically understand what tools to apply to what job? Well, the jury is still out. We, we don't know. Um, but the one thing I would caution you is say, you know, don't slavishly say, well, deep learning worked over here, it's going to work over here. Uh, be able to understand your problem. Look at an end-to-end -end solution. Look at the, you know, look at the requirements that your customers ultimately are applying. Uh, and don't be afraid to run experiments that would challenge some of the assumptions, some of the traditional assumptions. Because as we're learning with Saffron, as we're learning with these new paradigms, as we're learning with new compute hardware that's coming out, uh, you know, we are, we are in it. If this is the golden age of AI, it's because we have more tools available to us. It would be a sin to be able to just use the same things over and over again. And so with that, I thank you. Uh, check out Saffron at the exhibit hall. Uh, and I'm Andy Hill. Appreciate it. So it's looking at it's basically colliding with 10,000 features against each other and not making any big assumptions about what things should should interact and what things shouldn't interact. Um, and if you talk, if you actually do a user study with the, the doctors themselves, they look at specific gestalts that they're trying to recognize. They're looking at they're not even really doing data analysis themselves. They're looking for shapes. They're looking for patterns. They're looking. They're, they're truly doing a cognitive process and analogizing to what they've seen before in the training. Does that have any discovery that you could then teach a doctor? Not, not yet in terms of that work. I know there's folks back in North Carolina who are working on that part right now uh, to be able to, you know, I think the, the holy grail is not just to be able to understand it, to, it's surface connections, but it's also to kind of make them, uh, explain away why those connections are relevant. Uh, and I think that's, especially, we've had some promising results in the natural language side where you can actually pull out the connections and you know, build chains of reasoning on the of that. Um, it's not clear to me exactly, I'm not privy to the work that's going on here, and it's not clear how you actually build that chain of reasoning up and surface up those defaults. Um, but I have seen similar work in, in medical imaging where you're actually providing negative evidence. Right? Now here, you know, here are the 10 crazy mistakes you wouldn't believe that you made. Great, thank you. Um, does anyone have any other questions? We've checked for one more. All right. Well, thank you, Andy. Thank that you was so helpful. much. Okay.